What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Soap Skin and Bubble Extension tutorial for you. So it's been a while since I've talked about this extension. This is a wonderful extension for creating things like tinsel structures or also just creating grids inside of complex shapes that you can then edit a little bit later on. So in this video I thought that we'd talk about one way that we could create a tinsel structure using Soap Skin inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, and so what we're going to do for this video is is we're going to create a tensile structure that almost follows kind of a circular shape. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use our geometry to our advantage. One thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you go download Soapskin and Bubble from the SketchUp Extension Warehouse. I will link to that in the notes down below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something that's kind of circular. And so to start off, the way that we wanna do that is we wanna tap the C key to activate the circle tool. And in this case, we're assuming our big circle is going to have eight sides. So we're just going to type in a value of eight and hit the enter key. Notice how when you do this, the shape of the circle in your model changes. But now what I want to do is I just want to draw a circle. It's going to have a radius of maybe like 50 feet or something like that. And so the assumption here is that we're going to create some kind of a tensile structure um, that kind of follows along half of this uh, shape. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we need to start by modeling the tensile structure that runs along one of the legs here. So what I'm gonna do is whenever you, whenever you model out a tensile structure, you really need to think about where your support points are going to be. So in this situation, I'm gonna take this shape, I'm gonna offset it in, and we're assuming that we're gonna have maybe like a 15 foot walk or something like that. So I'm gonna offset this in by 15 feet. And so what I want to do is I want to use the extension soap skin in order to create a tensile structure piece that's going to follow along each one of these segments. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to start by drawing our supports. So I'm just going to draw a line up like this. And we're assuming this is probably going to be about, we'll call it 12 feet off the ground. So I'm going to draw a line that's 12 feet off the ground. Then I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this to all of these different points. So remember you just select an object, tap the M key, and then tap the control key to go to copy mode. And so now what I have is I have my various supports in here and we can model these out in more detail later. At the moment, it doesn't really matter how detailed they are because all we're worried about is modeling out the supports for our tensile structure. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna draw an arc between two of these points. So I've tapped the A key to activate the arc tool and then I click on one of these points. I click on the other point and then I move my mouse up and down. And so to make this easier, you might wanna think about tapping the up arrow key in order to lock this to the blue axis. And so I'm just going to assume this is gonna have maybe a bulge of, we'll call it, we'll call it four feet. So I'm gonna draw an arc, it's four feet here. And instead of trying to recreate this, I'm just gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode. Maybe I'll move my default model out of the way. I'm just gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode because this is centered on our central point right here. So I'm just gonna tap the Q key. Notice that I have this selected and I'm just gonna click on this center point. I'm gonna click here. Notice how right now this is moving this I don't want this to move this. I wanna tap the control key and then rotate this so that this goes on this point right here. And so what we've done is we've basically roughed out our two supports. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode again to copy these lines up just like this. And so what we have in here now is we have basically a frame. Well, when you use the extension soap, skin, and bubble, what you need is you need a closed in shape, which we now have that we can use as a frame. So I'm just going to do a shift click. I'm gonna select all of these edges. And then with soap, skin, and bubble activated, I'm gonna click on the button for generate soap skin. So notice how what this does is this basically tries to add a grid that kind of aligns with the shape. And you can adjust the, the resolution of the grid by typing in a new value. So I'm gonna type in a value of 20 and hit the enter key. Notice how that adds, um, an, that basically doubles the amount of subdivisions that's getting added in the shape. And then I'm just gonna hit the enter key. And so one thing I don't like about this is the way that this is creating the topology. Because if you look at this, 
from like a straight up and down view, you can see how what this is doing is this is creating our grid based on the red and green axes, right? So it's basically creating our grid to align with the red and green axes. The problem with that is it gives me really messy topology. Like I've got a bunch of like ugly triangles and stuff in here. And you could probably leave this as is if you really wanted to. Um, I'm going to. And so you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to rotate it so that this aligns with the green axis. So all I'm going to do is select it all. Just use the rotate tool in order to align this with this green axis. The only thing this is going to do that's different than what we did before is now when we select all of these, add our skin. You can see how this aligns a lot better with our shape now. So if I hit the inner key, you can see how my topology is a much, it, it fits along here a lot better. And so what we need to do is we need to apply some pressure to this in order to make it um, move up a little bit more. Um, one thing we may wanna do is we may wanna go out of this for a second, double click into this shape and do a control A, and then right click and reverse our faces because the direction that this calculates your pressure um, is dictated by the direction that your face is facing. So now, if we apply a value of, let's say 10, it's gonna apply pressure this way, where before it would have applied it the other way. So maybe I'll apply, apply a pressure of 20 or 30. Notice how you can just kind of try things in here um, in order to try to get the shapes that you like. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is. You could also mess around with your ratio in here because that's gonna affect how harshly this is pulling on this. So, um, but notice how you can come in here and you can make adjustments depending on the look that you're going for. So if you want this to be down more, lower pressure. If you want this to be up more, higher pressure. So maybe I'll leave this on 20 for right here. And so now what I want to do, because I don't want to come in here and remodel this over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all of these pieces, select them, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make them a component. And so the reason we're going to make this a component is because we want to copy these around this circle and we want them to all be copies of the same object. So we're just going to call this canopy piece and click create. And then we're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode. So I'm just gonna tap the Q key. That's gonna activate this tool. Make sure that you have your canopy selected. And we're just gonna single click in order to set a base point. We're gonna click again. So in this case, I'm gonna click on one of these corners and we're gonna move our mouse like this. But before we click, we wanna tap the control key to put our tool in copy mode. So notice how that's creating a copy. And then if I click, that's created one copy in here. Well, as long as I don't click again, what I can do is I can type in times and then seven and hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create seven copies of this one object. And so basically what this has allowed us to do is this has allowed us to create our entire circular canopy running along this whole thing without having to model them out individually. And one of the cool things about this, and I'm actually going to move a copy of this off to the side so I can edit it, is you can edit any copy of this and every one of them is going to change. I'm gonna minimize my outliner over here, but notice how now, for example, if I wanted to come in here and use the circle tool in order to create some posts, so like some support posts, notice how I can add this to one object and it's getting added to all of the objects. So then if I want to, I could select the whole thing and use the move tool in copy mode to copy this over here, just like this. And again, notice how this is getting added to every one of these. And the cool thing is because this makes a full circle, you don't even have to model out these other edges because the way this comes together, the uh, legs from each side make up a complete assembly in here. So there's a few other things you could do in here as well. So for example, you could use the follow me tool in order to extrude this, in order to create some kind of a support post. You have to be a little bit careful at the geometry that's created in here. Um, you could also use an extension like pipe along path in order to do that. So, or lines to tubes, either way. But notice how by detailing out one instance of this component, 
these other items are being detailed out as well. And again, notice how I only have to model them out on this one side over here in order for this to work. But once you've created your shape with soap, skin, and bubble, you can use this component modeling method in order to save time and not have to model out all of the individual parts and pieces eight different times. So, and then one other thing you might want to think about doing is you might want to think about using the, um, you might want to think about using the soften edges tool in your tray in order to hide all of this extra geometry because this is kind of clunky looking right now. So in order to do this, what you can do is you can take this and you can just check the box for soften coplanar and you can use this little angle slider in order to set the angle at which um, all of the edges are going to be hidden. So you can see how what this did is this basically came in here and this smoothed everything out so you don't have all of these extra edges in here inside of your model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you been using using soap, skin, and bubble. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.